Hi everybody, this will be part 12 in the character rigging tutorial series. Uh, this video will discuss how to paint the skin weights for the leg. So in the previous video we talked about the two major methods of uh, applying skin weights. And uh, the way I'm going to show is I'm going to flood the pelvis again. So we'll take the pelvis and I'm going to do a value of 1 and we'll do flood. So that removes the skin weight for every other joint. Uh, so then now what I'm going to do with a value of one, I'm going to select the hip and then from the middle of the hip down, I'm going to add a value of one so that the hip will move the entire uh, leg. So I'm just painting with a value of one, uh, add operation of the leg all the way down. I have the hip joint selected. So we'll continue to add until we get all of this white. Move this around so we can see it here. There we go. Just a little bit in there. All right. So previously I showed how to create um, range of motion test animations here. So you can see I've missed some vertices in some areas. So we're going to come back and just make sure um, yep, right there we missed a little. There you go. So that way there's no spikes. There's still a couple of spikes on the back of it. So we'll make sure we flood the entire back of the leg by painting over a value of white of one. Make sure we get all of these vertices painted through there. Okay. So that way when I scrub my timeline, there should be no kind of pinching in the bottom areas of the body there. Go back and correct it some more here. Still got some, so we'll go back and kind of make sure, yep, uh, that we get rid of those pinches. It's like somewhere on the bottom down here. There we go. That vertex you can also like on that particular frame that you see the pinching uh, you can come in here and paint over it manually as well to kind of correct that um, but then you also want to go back to the default pose to see how that looks as well all right so now that from really the middle of the hip down I've kind of painted everything white so that I know the lower leg will move with my hip uh, now that I know that weight is off of the pelvis, so the pelvis is not going to affect directly uh, these vertices. So if I go back to the hip, what I'm going to do next is put a value of like, uh, let's do like 0.3 for default. I'm going to slowly add weight to this upper area so it'll start blending what, um, how the leg starts to deform the thigh area into the butt area. There you go. Well, Add some up here. You do want it to kind of blend some of that even into the crotch area. We want it to move more of this as well, so we'll continue kind of adding more weight. But with the low value 0.1 to 0.3, move that up a little bit. Yeah. Um, now we can start to get some blending motion of what uh, this hip and how this hip is going to hip joint move that geometry. So what we want to do is try to get rid of any major kind of spikes and issues that we might have. Um, so we'll continue to add a couple more. Let's actually put my value down to 0.1. My brush size down a little bit. And start to blend these even more here. So I want to you know, blend that a little bit so that's not too pointed. There we go. Fix that area as well. Fix that area some. There you go. Alright, until we get something that's starting to look a little bit more natural. So perhaps we need a little bit more back here. And you want a good gradient between the lower leg area and up to the hip area. Move that up a little more. So we do want kind of a smooth gradient there. There we go. All right, so we'll test out the other ones as well. That looks pretty good as a starting point. 
Uh, we want a good blend. So what the advancement is here is that I don't have to correct any ones up there. I'm only adding the weight to this joint that I want this joint to affect on the geometry. So I don't have to correct any of that weird stuff that's going on up there. It might be nice to add a little bit of this kind of middle crotch area that's blending. Blend it a little bit there. Uh, but overall that should be pretty good there. That's a good starting point. All right, so now we're gonna move to the knee. And the knee doesn't have any weight on it, so we're going to add our value of one again. Find my brush size, there we go. And I can find it. Knee. Okay, my knee is not locked. Let me let me click off of my geometry and go back on it. See if that will correct that. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so my brush wasn't showing up on my geometry. So my hip is set up, ready to go. Now I just need to add the weight for my knee. Um, so whenever I paint over with a value of one or any value for the knee, if I go back to the hip, it removes that weight from the hip. It blends it back to the knee. So I'm going to flood with a value of one. The same idea I did with the hip, but now I'm doing it with the knee all the way down to the lower end of the foot on all angles as much as I can. To make sure that the knee will rotate and animate the right parts of the body that I want it to. Continue to flood around. We'll do that entire loop right there, completely white. All right, so now that I've tested out my hip and got my hip a pretty good start, I don't need these test animations anymore. So what I can do is take that hip joint and I can uh, make sure I'm on frame zero, which is back at my uh, bind pose. In my channel box, with that hip joint selected, I can drag select over translate, rotate, scale, and visibility attributes, the words, and I can right click and choose break connections. So break connections removes all of those keyframes. Now you need to make sure you're on your first frame and not on a later frame, uh, because when you do break connections, it keeps the pose, but removes any keyframes. So that way there's no animation on my hips anymore. Uh, and then we're going to move to our knee. We'll do range of motion with our knee. Now we don't have as much range of motion with the knee. Uh, let's do 40 frames and we're going to rotate this back. Okay, about right there. And I have some stretching that I'll correct here in a minute. But we'll rotate our knee backwards. And then uh, let's copy frame zero. Right click on frame zero and paste that over here somewhere. And then maybe 30 or 40 frames later, I'm going to like hyper extend the knee a little bit, rotate it forward. But this is a hinge joint, so this joint will not move side to side. It's just going to move forward and backwards. So for my knee, that's the only range of motion that I need for my knee. So after you have your range of motion set up for your knee, now I can go back and uh, let's see, make sure we're not having any weird pinching going on. So value of one, correct that one, value of one, see where that is. It's going to be kind of hard if we have that individual spike there. Let's see if I can, nope. Okay, so it's, um, looks like that's back here. Yeah, there we go. All right, so correct any spikes to begin with, and then now I can blend. So I have my joint knee selected, and then now I'm gonna go back up and let's do a value of 0.3. Decrease my brush size, and let's paint on uh, the middle knee joint so that'll blend those. All of those. Put some right there. And then let's put our value at 0.1 and blend kind of getting towards the top of the knee. Because we want our knee joint to move some of these vertices up top, not all of them. There you go. Now let's play test that. So let's um, drag our timeline. It's pretty good for the top area. We just need to blend more of the back area here. So let's move our frame to like frame 16. And then I'm slowly going to add with a value of 0.1 more weight until it starts to look more natural here. So it's kind of like sculpting almost. There you go. So that's a better blend. I don't want to lose mass. So that's something else I want to make sure I'm paying attention to is that when this joint moves, I don't want to deform the mass too much. It's all right. Maybe we'll slowly add a little more weight back to this area as well. Pretty good. 
pull that one and pull that one back a little more. There you go. We don't want to move the kind of upper leg too much, uh, maybe a little bit, but not too much there. So maybe we want to keep uh, adding a little bit more blending here to the lower knee. Pull this one loop down a little bit more here. There you go. Smaller brush size to get that one out a little more. That looks pretty good. So the idea is we're going to move down each joint, add the skin waist by flooding everything. And one small vertex down here that I need to go back and add a value of one to. There we go. Correct some of that. All right. So that way our knee works pretty good now. All right, maybe we'll put a value of 0.1. Got this little layer right there and we need to correct. That looks pretty good. All right, so we're gonna do this for every joint. So now we'll go ahead and move to the ankle, uh, which is this joint down here. And let's add a value of one and flood my entire ankle area. Go back into our paint skin waste tool. Flood our entire foot for the ankle. Okay, so I have my ankle joint selected and I'm flooding geometry of the foot and the ankle area with a value of one. Make our brush size smaller. And then we'll come back into our range of motion for our ankle. We could start there. So now we don't need our joint rotation for the knee. Uh, so I can make sure I'm on the first frame. Drag select over translate rotate scale and visibility in the channel box for this joint and choose right click and choose break connections. So now I'm going to go to my ankle joint, create some range of motion tests for that. So it's hit the S key on frame zero, maybe 30 frames later, we're going to rotate the joint backwards. Then 30 frames later, we're going to rotate the joint. So the foot's leaning up. Let's copy our frame zero. And uh, maybe 20, 30 frames later, we're gonna do like side to side rotate. There you go. So we can test that. All right, so we wanna try the range of motion action here. Uh, you know, technically we need to have side to side rotate. So we'll copy this frame over again, paste. And then we'll also do like this rotation and then rotate across the other axis, something like that. There we go. So that's all the rotates that we need for the ankle. So really an omnidirectional joint. We can go back in our skin weights uh, and test it out. See how it goes. We're, we're pretty good. It's not too bad. Uh, we really don't want that um, pants leg to move too much uh, when the foot moves. So we do need to blend it around a little bit more. So with a value of like 0.1, I do want to come in here and blend this some more so that way when the foot is leaning forward, it's still going to blend this and bend to form that part of the body some. Get that little vertex in there too. There we go. Okay, so we need it to move more of the back here. We just don't want it to look unnatural. So make sure you're not accidentally dragging over the other foot. We don't want this ankle to affect the other foot. There we go. Some more loops in the ankle might be helpful to get the right motion here. Pretty good. Okay, then we'll do a little bit more here. There we go. Kind of correct the sides a little bit. All right. Uh, we don't really want this uh, foot to really affect the uh, the cloth too much. That's pretty good. All right. The next thing is the ball of the foot, the base of the toes. Uh, so let's uh, remove the keyframes for the ankle. Looks pretty good there. So make sure we're on frame zero. Translate, rotate, and scale attributes. Right click and choose break connections again. And then with the ball of the foot, 
We're really only going to want them to rotate up and down, so let's hit a keyframe on zero for the ball of the foot. 30 frames later, we're going to rotate backwards. And then maybe 30 frames later, we're going to rotate down some. There go. It's not affecting the geometry right now. We'll come back and correct that. All right, so back in our skin weights, we're going to select the ball of our foot. Let's change the value to one. Maybe make our brush size a little larger. We definitely want the end of the toes to move 100% of the time when this ball of the foot rotates. Um, probably even to you know those two loops right there. So maybe if I scale my brush down a little bit, we can get a little bit more refined painting for this. There you go. All right. Uh, but then now we want to blend because that's just going to really create a kind of a popping motion. So now with the value of 0.1, okay, we're going to take the next loop and kind of blend that back so that it's not going to be such a harsh of a bend. There we go. Watch that play. Pretty good. Need to bend it a little more. This middle one needs to go a little bit more here. Okay, so maybe we can come and add a little bit more weight there. There we go, that's pretty good. Maybe we need a little more weight on the bottom here. Inside here as well. So when the foot bends, it's not gonna crunch as much. Crunch a little too much there. So what you might wanna do is go back to the ankle, blend a little bit more back with the ankle here. There we go. So it's not gonna crunch too much. There we go, that looks a lot better now. Now if we go to an extreme, yes, it's gonna crunch more, but we're not really gonna be pushing that um, that foot you know, too much here. Maybe that much in, um, maybe that much this way. So let's blend this back a little more. So sometimes I'm going back to the next join up and adding the weight to blend it back and forth. All right, that's a pretty good starting point here. All right, so that's applying the skin weights and adjusting the skin weights to the hip. If I go back up to the hip, you can see the hip is not directly affecting the lower leg. Uh, so there's my hip skin weights. Here's my knee skin weights. Okay, so that's now just affecting uh, the middle area of the leg. Uh, my ankle skin weights and my ball or the base of the toe skin weights. So we'll come back in a later video and do all of the twist skin weights uh, at the same time. But that's how we can set up the skin weights for the leg.